Hey guys, I'm Dov, and today I'm back with more Total War Warhammer 2 online action. I'm going to be taking the Lizardmen this time, and we are facing up against the High Elves once again. Let's go ahead and get straight to the army compositions here. My forces are going to be led by Krokgar himself. He is up on Grimlock, and uh, in this guise, he is one of the strongest combatants probably in the game, and probably in game one as well. 560 weapon strength with 375 armor piercing and a 35 bonus versus large means he dishes out a ton of pain. 100 armor as well, of course, great leadership and 81 charge bonus. He's also got this Hand of the Gods bound spell, which is basically like uh, Shem's Burning Gaze, but it seems to be a bit more powerful. He's got, of course, the Swiftness of Itzel, which is a splash ability that gives him speed and does a huge splash, uh, you know, knockback to infantry around him. So very strong to get out of a bind if you're surrounded by Phoenix Guard or Black Guard or so on. Uh, Sacred Spawning of Zodal gives him physical resistance and vigor uh, for 22 seconds, which is very, very nice. And of course, cold-blooded, as all uh, Lizardmen leadership units have. For the main line here, we've got Source Warriors with shields up front. We've got four of them, backed up by a lowly Skink Priest. I say lowly. I love Skinks. They're so adorable. And the Skink... The Skink Priests with their feathers and that, that skull he's wearing is just amazing. He's got Lore of Beasts, so we're going to be dropping some Flock of Doom, a little bit of Pan's Impenetrable Pelt for some physical resistance and speed, and Wisson's Wild Form for some extra armor and weapon damage, which is very pertinent with Saurus Warriors. They have base 52 weapon strength, which is already very high. Granted, only 18 of that is armor piercing. But with this high of weapon strength, they'll do a lot of damage even to armored units. They also only have 60 armor themselves, so that uh, Wisson's Wild Form is definitely pertinent with these guys. You can see my opponent's Reaper, uh, excuse me, Eagle Claw, Reapers for the Dark Elves. Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower opening up already. Got the Revivification Crystal and a unit of Temple Guards here for some rear line support. Pushing up as well through each uh, set of woods here, we've got some Skinks backed up by Cold One Spear Riders. Skinks are a very nice mobile unit. We've got the Skink Cohort with the Poison Javelins here. Very cheap unit. The Poison Javelins are great. These guys are also pretty decent in melee, and for the cost, they're a really nice unit, especially for a roll like this. They're uh, pitching some Poison Javelins. Most of them are going to hit trees, but they will make contact with a few Javelins here on these Illyrian Reavers, who at only 40 armor will take quite a bit of damage there. We've got a mirror on this flank over here with uh, some skink cohorts with javelins and a cold one spear, excuse me, cold one spear rider. So just uh, pushing up the main force here, going to be fighting my opponent straight up the pocket. He's got a front line of white lions of trace ranked up to uh, double gold chevron rank eight, which is very interesting. He's got Tyrion here uh, on foot, actually, which is also uh, pretty interesting. Typically, you'll see him on a horse, but uh, in this uh, in this guise, he still has 125 armor, excellent melee stats. His main drawback is that he only has 190 armor piercing. Uh, he has 470 total weapon strength, but only 190 armor piercing is pretty subpar, to be honest, and really makes him not super competitive when compared to other, you know, melee specialist lords. Uh, to back him up, he's got uh, three units of archers, one spearman here to hold the rear. <laughs> See what I did there? And uh, two phoenix guard, one on each flank, which are an excellent unit, hard counter to most of what the wood, uh, the lizardmen can bring. Uh, lizardmen don't have a lot of armor piercing in their front line, so these guys at 100 armor can stand up to Saurus. They have armor piercing themselves and anti-large to take on dinosaurs. Great unit in this matchup. They are very expensive, however, at 1,300 gold each, so you definitely need to make them pay off. And, uh, yeah, my opponent smelling the ruse over here, uh, being charged by some uh, Cold One Spear Riders is pretty obvious, I guess. But uh, he's going to pull away these Illyrian Reavers, try and get out of this situation. However, we are going to catch a few of the unit models here, especially for this one that's being poisoned. And uh, that we'll be able to catch a few and spear them down with these Cold Ones. Beautiful looking units but on both sides. Man, just all the units. I'm going to be gushing about these guys for weeks because they all look amazing. Just amazing. But uh, in the main line here as we advance my opponent dropping a really nice net of Amantok so I'm gonna scurry these forces away of course and unfortunately I don't bring back all my guys my my intention was to just hold with my entire army because the Saurus Warriors with shields uh, won't take a ton of damage they will take some damage from these archers but not a ludicrous amount so uh, unfortunately <laughs> we did just go ahead and charge forward with this I say unfortunately it's gonna be epic but uh, we did go ahead and just charge forward with these guys uh, gonna have <laughs> 
uh, Krokar cares not for the white lines of trace. He's going to immediately get onto this light wizard to keep her from casting any more nets, which is a very good for me. We're pushing around this flank with these uh, cold ones here since my opponent didn't have anything to, uh, you know, answer them with. The Illyrian Reavers do being used in conjunction very nicely here with the Phoenix card to cut down the cold ones riders. However, the skinks are going to get in here as well and just kind of bog things down. The Cold One Riders uh, did get routed off, unfortunately, but it looks like they're going to rally now, and we'll be able to bring them up and around here. I did get my Telestration tools turned on so I can actually use them now. Uh, meanwhile, we're just firing in from these two skinks uh, into this unit of uh, Phoenix Guard. We're not going to do a ton of damage there, but, uh, you know, any damage we can do with these really cheap units against this very expensive unit is basically for free. Meanwhile, this other unit of Cold Ones has uh, gotten into the chicken coop, as they say, and is going to be terrorizing all these archers. Very, very bad day for them see those poison javelins just absolutely raining in on this unit of phoenix guard he's not really sure where to go the uh, bastilodon is in here crushing these uh white lions and although the lizardmen may not have armor piercing on their frontline troops they've definitely got armor piercing in terms of their dinosaurs which can definitely be used to help supplement that uh, you can see uh, Shem's Burning Gaze going off, not making any solid contact, but uh, the Saurus fighting up against White Lions is a pretty even trade, honestly. White Lions will definitely win that straight up, but we are going to be dropping a nice flock of doom here with the Skink Chief. So tearing away some of the hit points of these very high-value units help my guys trade a bit more effectively there. Meanwhile, uh, Krokar's taken quite a bit of damage from these archers, and is taking a surprising amount of damage from Tyrion as well. However, he's just uh, such a beast, and I've got the Revocation Crystal, I've got Cold Blooded from the Skink Priest and from Krokar himself to be able to heal him. So I can do this, just go ahead and pull him away from combat. He's got pretty high speeds, so none of these guys can catch him. We'll go ahead and just uh, drop the Cold Blooded on him, to heal him back up to full strength. Just pulling away this unit of skink cohorts that's still got a few javelins. It's going to be pitching them into the side of this uh, Phoenix Guard here, who's still just bogged down in these skinks. And although skinks are a low, you know, low tier unit, Phoenix Guard don't kill other units very fast. So if you can bog them down like this, uh, they'll be very cost and effective. Meanwhile, this other unit of Cold One Spear Riders just continuing to terrorize these archers in the back line and uh, just really not allowing them to fire and get the work done they need to. These skinks are chasing off this unit of White Lions here. Uh, but the main pocket is somewhat collapsed here. I did lose the infantry battle, but totally forgot about these temple guards. We're going to activate them now that this uh, end phase of the battle is going to be approaching. I finally remembered that I actually had them. They would have been useful, but at the same time, holding them in reserve like this may not have been bad, because now that all these units are super tattered, there's really nothing that can stand up to them. So... I mean, even Krokar is down fairly low. Uh, the Revocation Crystal, unfortunately, took a bit of damage there and almost got routed off, but we are healing it with the Cold-Blooded. But, uh, yeah, those unit, one unit of archers that's still attempting to fire, getting charged on by the Cold One Spear Riders. Over here, the Illyrian Reavers uh, came back from routing, but still just <laughs> getting bogged down on these dang skinks. They are a menace, to be sure. And they're so cute. Just look at the little reptile faces. Oh, my goodness. I can't stand it. Uh, anyway... The uh, Light Wizard's still alive here, still firing away with that Shim's Burning Gaze, just doing everything they can to take down Krokar, but uh, you can see he got that uh, swiftness of Itzel there, knocked back a lot of those Phoenix Guard, and allowed him to just kind of scurry wherever he wants to. So Tyrion's trying to get on him, but Tyrion himself is taking quite a bit of damage, and uh, it's just going to be tough. You can see Krokar's actually munching on a Phoenix Guard there. Oh my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. You can see Tyrion attempting to... Uh, see off the, uh, the great lizards here but not having a good time of it he has very low mass of course granted the bonus versus large doesn't really apply but uh, just continuing to hammer away with that shem's burning gaze i'm surprised it's done a bit of damage but nothing overly substantial but uh, you can see the terror now is becoming an issue for a lot of the elven units the balance power is heavily in my favor and it's going to pretty much be that game so yeah well played to my opponent very much enjoyed that battle Let's go ahead and take a look at the breakdown here. So yeah, Tyrion, probably not the best choice. Uh, because the Lizardmen don't really have a flying contingent that can stand up to a dragon, I'd definitely bring a dragon in this matchup. Um, but Krokar is a major menace to a dragon, so you have to be careful coming down onto the ground. It's tough. I don't think the High Elves really have a good answer here in terms of their Lord solution. Uh, the Skink Priest really didn't get touched, just continuing to drop those Flock of Dooms, which is very nice. Both these units of Phoenix Guard getting a Chevron and performing very well, 132-52. 53 kills, respectively. Uh, one of those was this Cold One Spear Rider. The other Cold One Spear Rider got 115 kills in a Chevron. That's the one that got into those archers and just completely shut them down. You can see very few kills across the board on these guys. Illyrian Reavers got some decent kills, but those were mostly on Skinks. 
And uh, the skinks themselves didn't do a lot, but again, they're mostly just to pressure the flanks and to be kind of a meat shield. Temple Guards didn't get activated to the end of the fight there, but did end up racking up 21 kills. You know, if they had been soaked into that fight, it would have gone even more in my favor. But the Saurus performing admirably across the line, this one getting 53 kills and a chevron. It's very nice. So, yeah, for the White Lions, um, I'm not sure how much they cost with this double gold chevron. I'd have to check, but I don't think this is super cost-effective for them. Even at 800, though, I mean, they are cost-effective, but they're not wildly cost-effective. Um... The Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower as well, I think it's just going to be, it's going to struggle to be cost effective. It's a nice unit, has good utility, but uh, it's just tough. You know, artillery is just a tough game, and really in this game, I think probably the the Laser Lizard, the, the Solar Engine Basilodon, and the Skaven Artillery are pretty much the only artillery pieces that are worth it. I, I'm not really sold on the Reaper or the Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower. I think there's just better options for these guys, but uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed watching that. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I'm keeping it coming with more Total War Warhammer 2 every single day. So stay tuned for more, and we will see you next time.